Today, guys, we're back with my series where we look at specific techniques. Obviously, today we're doing a head round kick. I'm gonna give you guys some points, some reasons why that head round kick might not be as awesome as you want it to be. Little tips or tweaks that'll make this technique just flow so much better for you. Intro, guys, and then all the intricacies of a head round kick. All right, we've already covered a couple techniques in this series. If you want, you can check out how to throw a left hook properly, little mistakes you might be making. And I've also done an episode on the overhand because I know that's a problem area for many people as well. But today is all about that head round kick. Now, if you've been struggling getting it up there, there's a good chance that one of your issues or two of your issues are either flexibility or just your ability to have the strength to lift that leg up high enough. Both of those can be dealt with in my video up here. You can check that out, go through, follow along video, it'll give you all the details you need. But today is more about the small details, which could be throwing your kick off. And I wanna to start today off by talking about the lowest portion of the body, the feet. What are the feet doing? Once we've established that, then we'll work our way up to the hips, the arms, the head, the torso, everything, because usually, if you're having trouble with the technique, it is very solvable. It's just sometimes hard on your own to figure out why it's not working. So the very first thing, when we get ready to throw a round kick up to head level, we have to recognize what is our standing leg doing. For a nice head round kick, we need to pivot. A pivot means we disconnect our heel, we get to the ball of the foot, we turn our foot at least 90 degrees, that's 90 so far, ideally more like 180. We disconnect our heel so that when we go to pivot, the friction of a flat foot doesn't slow us down. If I keep my foot flat to the ground and I even try to throw a body level round kick, it's very difficult for me to feel fluid on that. So if I can elevate my heel, we're talking a millimeter. It doesn't need to be way up here for a head level round kick. It's just slightly off the ground and then I can go into that pivot through the ball of the foot. That will allow everything else to follow along the way it should and you won't get jammed up because your foot is not allowing you to turn the rest of your body. So that foot there stays connected to the floor, but twists, and then I can come up and throw that head level around and kick, no problem. Now, pretty much everything through this section of the leg, basically from the thigh downwards, is going to follow the foot. So we don't have to worry about anything else from the thigh down if we are executing a proper pivot. But now we can move into what are our hips doing. And very often when I see people struggle with a head round kick, they turn their body, maybe through the upper portion, maybe through the lower portion, but they have the other end of their body fighting that. So for example, I throw a nice big pivot, but I keep my shoulders in the wrong position. I don't let everything move together. Well, the same thing can happen with my hips. As I execute my pivot, I want to make sure this right hip, which was in the back, follows forward. So it's like the foot and the hips are connected. If this moves, this has to move at the same time. I want to make sure when I finish this kick, that whichever leg I'm throwing with, I'm throwing with my right leg, my right hip is completely in front. It's not slightly in front. So if I'm kicking towards you and I go to throw this right leg, my hips are not like this, my hips are like this. You guys can see the difference. That's a full rotation, and this is just a half rotation. This is a little 45 degrees, not good enough when we're coming from that 90 degree position initially. And the same thing goes with the chest. If you keep your chest square, as you try to throw your kick and turn your body over, it's like mechanics are fighting against each other. I want my chest, my hips, my foot to all twist together. Now, once we have that down, we can look at what are our arms doing. The arms are going to be a big factor because off balancing is an issue. If I throw my round kick, and I try to splay my arms out for balance, it might seem like I'm doing something good, but this is actually drawing me backwards, pulling me, I can feel it. It's like this hand wants to touch the ground and I'm having to use my oblique muscle to fight and hold myself up. We want to make sure that we figure out, okay, I'm kicking with my right leg, my right hand is gonna swing. I'm gonna kick with my left leg, my left hand is gonna swing. The other arm stays high. There's a number of reasons for that balance, protection, but without getting into massive details, because I could go on and on about this hand here, just think whichever arm does not match the kicking leg stays tight to the head. The less motion you can do with it, 
the better. So when executed properly, my hands are up here, I simply swing my arm down and I execute that kick. Swing the arm down and then kick. And then I can draw right back. Now let's talk about what our head's doing. Because you might think, okay, my head, my torso, they're gonna follow one another. But a lot of times people think I have to keep my head safe. And by leaning backwards, by throwing my head back, I'm gonna stay extra safe. Now I am very balanced, very flexible. So I can get away with throwing my head backwards and not falling over. But a lot of people can't do that. A lot of people are gonna throw their head backwards and everything's gonna come apart. Try to think, and this is not 100% of the time, this is not an exact rule, but try to think that your head is gonna stay over your foot. Now, like I said, this is not a perfect science. I have seen Muay Thai fighters who when they kick, they go there. I've seen other Muay Thai fighters who actually sort of throw their head forward. Not a lot, but they lean in just a little bit. But I think finding that point in between, just keeping your head completely above this foot is a good rule of thumb. The only difficulty is it requires more flexibility because as I lean my head back very slightly, this has a little bit of a stretch, and that has about the same stretch, just because I'm leaning the head back. But if I go from here, and then I try to lift up without tipping my head backwards, now that stretch is so much more. But a good rule is just make sure as you throw your round kick, your head stays straight above, don't do anything wild with it, arms do everything that they should be, swinging, and your head just stays in position. Now I'm getting into some finer details here. You could also be struggling on your round kick simply because you are trying to take the leg and elevate it up to head level with it straight the whole time or almost straight. If I try to lift this leg up, that's so much harder than me just coming here and snapping up. So we need to remember that a round kick is not like this but a little bit of a bend and then a snap or a massive bend and a snap. Depends if you want to go Muay Thai style on the kick or a little bit more karate style. Karate style having much more of a bend and a snap, Muay Thai style being more from the hips and this leg just extending slightly at the end. Both are fantastic kicks, but it's very important that you remember when I throw my head kick, it's not a straight leg ugh, where you're trying to muscle ugh, and get all that strength just from turning your hips. You can still turn your hips at the same speed and then add in that little snap to increase your power. And then it makes the rechamber that much easier because once you hit, you pull straight back to here. Now this is so much easier to hold. Whereas if I went from here and I came down, 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 right there, that's very difficult. So remembering that the kick is only halfway done when you strike there is very important. You need to remember that you come out of the kick the exact same way you went into it. I think foot, hips, chest, arms, head, I get those all lined up and then I come out of it the exact same way that I went into it. So I'm always able to stay balanced on my exit. The last thing we want is for you to throw your head round kick up, land it, and then somebody just shoves you over to the floor. Now let's say you have all those elements down. You're like, okay, yes, I'm doing the feet, the hips, the chest, the arms, the head, but I'm just still having trouble landing it. Let's talk about that for a moment because just me being out here and trying to throw up a head kick and hoping it'll land, land flush to the head, it's kind of a pipe dream. And unless you're somebody who's super advanced and you're timing your opponent and looking for that opening and then exploding on the kick, but if you're not doing that, just trying to land when the guy's hands are up is very unlikely to be successful. So we need to talk about how we can open this guy up, what can we do to make this round kick up to head level land. So the first thing, one of the easiest, and it's something that's done in all of kickboxing time and time again, repetition, 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 you throw a hook and you come with a head round kick. Hook, head round kick. The reason we do this is because we have opposite sides working. If you guys throw a left hook at me right now and I come block, See what this arm did? It dropped. That's wrong, but a lot of people will do that. And then that leaves me open for the head round kick. If I just go like this, well then the head's not open, but a lot of people will make a mistake. So you're going opposite sides. You attack from one side and then come to the other, hoping they will make a mistake. Easy, effective setup, and you can always throw punches before that as well. You can go something like jab, hook, into the head round kick or get even fancier. One, two, three, four, five, and then up to the head round kick. But the hook to head round kick is a fantastic combination together. You wanna to make it even more advanced, 
you don't just attack opposite sides, you attack different heights. So I can, instead of throwing here, come down here, hoping that the guy will make even more of a mistake keeping his head open. I can come one and then up to two. That's one of my personal favorites. We can also get super fancy by trying to drop our head level, make this guy think that we're coming down low, and then coming up high. And those are all offensive moves. You are on the attack. There's also defensive. Let's say I was standing fairly close to the guy. I back up. And as I'm backing up, making distance, I throw the head round kick at the same time. And I can do that off either leg. I could be here where I'm much too jammed to throw a good head kick, but I jump. This foot goes backwards as I jump and then I can land my head kick. The options are really endless, but starting with the basic, one, two, is gonna be the one that you really want to get down. Anyway guys, there are some reasons why your round kick to head level might not be as awesome as you want it to be. Remember that I have videos you can check out to help your round kick, to help your kicking abilities. You can always find those right here on this video or just by scrolling through all the videos I have and finding something that suits you. So that's it for me today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you have not already, join the channel and get subscribed. Train hard, guys. I'll see you back here soon for another video.